Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over section 1-3a of our series on place value. We're going to be looking at decimals, tenths, thousandths, and hundredths place as illustrated in this table presented here. We're going to look at how to express, um, how to find the value of different digits in the decimals place and how to write it in fraction form, in verbal form, and also in decimal form. We have a practice problem at the end of this presentation that we'll like you to try out to demonstrate mastery of what we covered. And to gain access to our wide variety of courses ranging from Arithmetic, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, Pre-Calc, Calc, just take a look at the links in the description below. All right, the instructions for the problem we're going to be working on today are for us to fill the chart by identifying the place value of each digit. And we have to write the values of each digit in its name form. We're going to write it as a fraction and also as a decimal. Alrighty, so uh, we have 4.532 um, as the problem under consideration. We're just going to take a look at this problem, break it down completely, and then give you one problem to try out, okay? So we're going to proceed to populate this table, the bottom row, using the digits here. Let's call this central table right here, let's call that the decimal place, okay? This is a decimal column. So what you can do at this time, um, let's write that again properly. You can go ahead and pause the video presentation and you can create a table just like this so that you can follow us as we populate um, the columns with the digits and their respective place values. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to draw the table and you've identified the decimal place. Um, so let's go ahead and put in the digits. We're going to color code it so that everyone can see exactly what's going on. So we have four, four point five, three, two. Let's make the last one, let's make it purple, okay? All right, so let's start with the place values. To the left of the decimal point, remember you name your place values relative to, this, to the decimal point. To the left of the decimal point, you have the different place values that we covered in our previous lessons, right? We covered... Um, the the ones tens hundreds and then we went into the um, thousands period and then we went thousands ten thousand hundred thousand and also in the millions periods okay so if you don't remember those you can always go back to our tutorials in section one one and one two a and b to review that um, but we're just going to use the ones place as a baseline all right so to the left of the decimal place we have the ones the ones place all right now, if you go to the right of the decimal, now you're going to be having decimals of fractions, okay? To the right, one place to the right of the decimal is the tenths place. Tenths. Okay? And then, two places to the right of the decimal is the hundredths place. Hundredths. This THS basically means that it's a fractional component, all right? And then three places to the right of the decimal point is the what? Is the thousandths place. Thousandths. So one thing you want to remember is that there is only one ones place, okay? Now when you have the tens, you have tens and tenths. For the hundreds, you have hundreds to the left, two to the left, and then hundredths, two to the right, okay? So just remember that this THS, THS, THS component tells you that you're looking at fractions or decimals. All right, so let's also show you another way to think about these decimal places. So to the right of your the first place to the right, the tenths place is also considered your first decimal digit or first decimal place, okay? And then if you go two places to the right is your second decimal place or second decimal digit. And then three places is your third decimal place, 
or your third decimal digit. So thinking about it in ordinal format, first, second, third can also help you to determine what the values are when you're expressing them in decimal form. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna identify the names of each of these digits based on their places. So let's start with the first one, which is the ones place. So this number here is just four in uh, its name format, F-O-U-R. In digit form, it's just four point, just four point. And then uh, as a fraction, is four divided by one. Something to keep in mind for, section, for lesson 1.3b is that when you divide any number by one, you always end up with what you started with. Okay, is that is the identity under division. Whenever you divide by one, you always end up with what you started with. Okay, all right. Now let's move on to the tenths, please. The first decimal digit. How do you write this five in this number four point five three two? How do you write it um, in word form based on its value, its place value? This is the this five is five tenths. Okay, that's the word form. Now, how do you write it as a decimal? As a decimal, you can write it as zero point five, right? Zero point five. This five occup occupies the first decimal place. One place to the right of the decimal point is the tenths place, so that's why you put the five. Now, how do you write it as a fraction? Just think about the name, tenths, five tenths. That's how you write it as a fraction. Five divi divided by 10 is five tenths. Just like you have one half, one divided by two, right? Five tenths is five divided by 10. All right, so there goes the name, the decimal and the fraction forms. Let's take a look at the second decimal place or the hundredths place. We have a three there. So let's say what the name of this digit is based on its place in this number 4.532. Since it's in the second decimal place, the hundredths place, the name is three hundredths. Okay, three hundredths. Now, what if I wanted to write it as a decimal? Remember, the hundredths place is in the second decimal place. So in order to get there, we're gonna need a filler, all right? So we have zero point. Now, since it's in the second decimal place, we're gonna use a filler zero to occupy the tenths or first decimal place and put the three there. This way, we are ensuring that the three occupies the second decimal decimal place or the hundredths place. Okay, everything else is zero. So this zero here is just a, is a, is a filler. It helps you ensure that the three is two digits to the right of the decimal point. Okay. Now, how do you write this as a fraction? You write it the way you say it. Okay, it's three hundredths. Write it as a fraction. It's going to be three divided by one hundred. Three hundredths. Okay, the last one, which is the two digits in 4.532, is in the um, third decimal place, the thousandths place. Okay, so in the name form, this digit is two thousandths. Thousandths. Bam, like that. Now, how do you write this as a decimal? It's in the third decimal place. So how are we going to write it? We want to make sure that we have two in the third decimal place. Everything else is zero. So you have zero point. Now we need three decimal places. We need two occupying the third decimal place. So the first two, guess what? The first two places are going to be occupied by zeros, our placeholders. So zero to occupy the tenth place zero to occupy the hundredths place and now we put in the two perfectly in the third decimal place or the thousandths place okay so this is the decimal 
form of this digit in this number. All right. Now, how do we write this two right here as a fraction? The way you say it is just how you write it. It's two thousandths, right? So it's two divided by what? One thousand. One, two, three. Another connection that you might have observed is that the number of zeros tells you the place value of that decimal digit. So you have one zero here for five tenths that tells you it's in the first place. You have two zeros here for three hundredths that tells you it's in the second decimal place. And then you have three zeros here for two thousandths, which tells you that it's in the third decimal place. Okay, so that's just a, another shortcut that you can use. And something to remember is the direction and the operation related to the direction. Every place to the right, if you're going to the right, you are multiplying by 1 over 10. Okay, that's the same thing as dividing by 10. When you are going to the left, is an inverse operation. This is what we did in, in section 1-1 one uh, one and 1-2. One um, and in that case, you're going to be multiplying by 10. That's the inverse operation. Okay, so multiplying by 1 tenth or dividing by 10 is the inverse of multiplying by 10. Okay, so if you notice what's happening here, we're going to the right multiple times and the zeros in the denominator increase by one every single time that we're going to the right. Okay, and then when you're going to the left, the zeros in the numerator, uh, when you're starting from the ones place and you're going to the left, the zeros in the numerator uh, starts to increase for every place that you go because you're multiplying by 10. All right, so that's just a, a little side note concerning how each decimal place changes with the direction of move relative to the position of the decimal point. All right, so it's now time for you to try out a practice problem. Okay, so for the practice problem, you have 5.719. Your task is to do exactly what we did in the previous example. You are to um, fill the table and identify the place value of each digit um, using the name, fraction, and decimal forms uh, considering their place value, okay? So go ahead and pause this video presentation at this time. Make your table, fill out the answers. When you're done, click on the playback button and we're going to reveal what the correct answer is. Okay, let's do this. Alrighty, welcome back. Hopefully you had a chance to try out um, the practice problems. So here are the solutions to the practice problem. Go ahead and um, Take a look at it and compare it to your work. I would like to know how well did you do in this practice problem? Did you get everything correct? Let us know in the comment section how well you did or if you have any questions, you can ask your teacher or I'll just ask us and we'll be more than glad to support you. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. If you found the contents of this presentation beneficial in your study of place values, do give us a like or a thumbs up. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other presentations such as this. And uh, do share this with your friends. Um, and don't forget to visit our website at mathgodserve.com for tons of support resources to help you do well in your math class. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.